Hello everyone. Today I have brought to you a very interesting video. This is a new variety of uh, series which I am starting wherein I am comparing the two biggest FMCG or one of the leading FMCG companies in India on the basis of the most important 10 fundamental points. So this is a 10 point analysis comparison of one of the two uh, biggest FMCG companies, one of which is Britannia and the other one is Dabur. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do subscribe right now and hit the bell icon and watch this video till the end because these 10 fundamental uh, analysis points are very critical and I'm sure at the end of this video, you will be able to choose the better of the two companies. I am Varun Agarwal and let's get started. So let me give a brief introduction before we begin. Britannia is among the most trusted food brands in India and uh, it manufactures India's most favorite brands like Good Day, Tiger, Nutri-Choice, Milk Bickies and Marigold. Britannia's product portfolio includes biscuits, bread, cakes, rusk and dairy products including cheese, beverages, milk and yogurt. Dabur is today India's most trusted name and the world's largest Ayurvedic and natural healthcare company and Dabur operates in key consumer categories like hair care, oral care, health care, skin care, home care and also food products and let's begin. So the first point of analysis is the market capital. If you see Britannia, the market cap is 81,100 crores approximately and Dabur around 82,500. So both of these companies are almost of the same size of market capital. The second comparison point is the price. So Britannia is trading at a price of about 3378 and the 52 week high and low is 2100 to 3584. So it is almost trading at a 52 week high price. And if you see the difference between the 52 week high price and the last trading price, it is trading at 5.75% lesser than the 52 week high price. Dabur, the last trading price is 466 and the 52 week high and low is 376 and 525. And Dabur is trading at 28.4% less than the 52 week high price. So a lot of us observe this 52 week high and low and feel that the companies trading at a lower price than the 52 week high price are having cheaper valuations and have attractive bets. But I am sure by the time you finish this video, you will know that that is not always true. The companies which are cheaper, which appear cheaper when compared to the 52 week high price may not be actually cheaper in terms of valuation. So in terms of price, Tabar is trading at a lower price when compared to the 52 week high price. Now let us discuss the PE and PB ratios. So I have a separate video made for uh, understanding PE ratio. If you don't know what is PE ratio, you can go through that video on my channel. And let me explain in brief, PE ratio is price earning ratio. This is calculated by dividing the current price of the share by the earning per share of that particular stock. And the PB ratio is price divided by the book value of the stock. So PE ratio of Britannia is 58 and uh, Dabur is 70. So in terms of PE, Britannia appears to be cheaper. And the price book ratio of Britannia is 20 and Dabur is 16. So in terms of PB ratio, Dabur, Dabur appears to be cheaper. So how is PB ratio calculated is uh, you have to calculate the book value of share. Book value is assets minus liabilities. So the profits and the shareholding uh, accumulated profits and the share capital and other shareholders funds divided by the total number of shares will give you the book value of the share. And if you divide the current price by the book value of share, you will get the PB ratio. So PB ratio shows how many times the book value, the current particular share is trading and PE ratio shows how many times the present earnings the share is trading. The fourth point here would be the sales growth. If you see the sales growth in the last five years, the average sales growth of Britannia is 9.5%. 
and in the last three years it is around 9.2 percent if you see dabur the average sales growth is around 2.71 percent in the last five years and average uh, in the last three years is about 6.67 percent so in terms of growth in terms of sales growth britannia is growing at a faster pace than dabur now let us look at the profit growth in terms of profit britannia's last 5 years profit growth is 17% and 3 uh, years profit growth is around 15.38% dabur's profit growth on an average 5 year basis is about 3.86% and the last 3 years is about 3.31% so in terms of profit also britannia is growing faster than dabur the next point this is one of the most important because ultimately whatever happens the you are investing money in stock market to get returns so in terms of returns britannia in the last 5 years in spite of the lockdown situation has given us about 165% returns in the last one year if we see it is still 16% up dabur in the last 5 years has given about 75% returns in the last one year it is 17% up so in terms of returns in the last 5 years on a long term basis britannia has given better returns than dabur let us see the debt i feel this is also one of the most important things which i look for in a company britannia is a debt free completely debt free company it has negligible debts that's why i have mentioned here nil dabur has a little debt of about 135 crores and debt equity ratio is 0.03 so dabur is also almost debt free but slightly better is britannia because it is completely debt free this again uh, is one of my favorite ways of looking at uh, the stocks britannia's intrinsic value is 1118 rupees and if you don't know what is intrinsic value and how to calculate intrinsic value i would recommend you to look at my intrinsic value video which is available on my channel and learn how to calculate it i have explained it in a very simple way and i am sure this will be very useful to you uh, to take the right decisions in your investing journey so the intrinsic value of britannia is about 1118 and the last trading price is three times the intrinsic value so it is trading three times the intrinsic value dabur's intrinsic value is around 100 rupees and the trading price is 4.5 times the intrinsic value so here is the difference as i said in the earlier slide you might have observed compared to the 52 week high dabur dabur may appear to be cheaper but if you see the intrinsic value wise britannia is at a better valuation than dabur so dabur looks more expensive if you see from the intrinsic value perspective let us look at the net profit percentage britannia's net profit percentage is about 10.7% dabur's is about 20% so here if you see dabur is almost two times uh, the britannia's net profit percentage so dabur is having higher profit margins now coming to the last comparison the return on equity and return on capital employed britannia is uh, earning a return on equity of about 28% and return on capital employed of about 42% dabur is earning return on equity giving a return on equity of about 32% and return on capital employed of about 38% so both of them are almost uh, similar and uh, so this is the 10 point comparison between both of them and let us come to a overall conclusion so for me britannia looks much better as the sales growth is higher the company is growing faster it is earning more profits it's giving better returns is what we want over a period of years it has no debts so it is very safe and valuation wise it is not cheap normally because it is three times the intrinsic value but compared to dabur the valuations are cheaper so looking at the main uh, points of comparison i felt britannia is cheaper uh, better than dabur but the possibility of getting britannia at a lower price is there because i you should be entering into that stock if at all you choose to at a lower price because it is already trading at a 52 week high price 
and whatever analysis we have done it is not a conclusive analysis because there are a lot of other factors also people consider while taking decisions like uh, the goodwill of the company the brand value of the products the recent results of the current year and the future growth prospects like this there are different other factors also which may also be considered to choose the best stock but on overall basis what i felt that these are the key points which should be compared and i have uh, i hope i have helped you to take the right decision to choose which stock is better among these two so thanks for watching this video and if you want me to compare your favorite stocks do comment the names of the stocks in the comments below and i will try to make a video comparing those of your favorite stocks preferably on in the same industry so do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to activate the notifications thanks for watching and have a great day